this lesson, lesson 10, it is a mini project where you are going to make a captioned scene for your warm up. I'm going to give you a minute and I want you to write down as many blocks as you can remember from Game Lab. Make sure you know what each one does, especially the inputs or parameters for each of those blocks. And then we'll just see how many you have after the end of a minute. And your minute starts now. You've already learned how to do some really great things in Game Lab. Today you'll have a chance to put them all together to make an interesting scene to share with the world. That means instead of trying to recreate someone else's idea, you're going to get to come up with an idea of your own. So it's time to get creative. Our question of the day, how can we use Game Lab to express our creativity? You do have an activity guide for this lesson, okay? Because we're creating a project and so you'll have a rubric and let's go over the rubric first and then I'll show you what the activity guide looks like, okay? So for our rubric, you have modularity. You're being scored on modularity. That is the concept. Extensive evidence means you have multiple sprites with multiple properties used. Convincing evidence is multiple sprites with at least one property used for each. Limited evidence, which would be a, th uh, a two, so it would be four, three, two, and one. At least one sprite with at least one property. And then if you have no sprites used in the program, then that counts as no evidence. Algorithms and control structures is the key concept. And... You will receive a four for this if your program is well sequenced, which means the order of it is really good and properly overlays elements on the screen. So if we think back to lesson nine, when our prisoner was in front of the bars and it wasn't supposed to be like that, that's not well sequenced. Okay, so a three would be the program may contain some incorrectly sequenced code, like the prisoner being in front of the bars, but generally looks correct. And that's going to include some of your code. So if you're typing your code out and there are errors, that may work against, against your um, score. Program has significant sequencing errors, but does display the screen, the elements on the screen. So if you have some pretty big issues in your code, but they show up on the screen instead of the gray, bo the gray box, then you'll at least get a two. And if your errors are significant enough to keep the program from running, then you'll get a one. And I think, I think I said this wrong. So but does display the elements on the screen. If I see a gray box for one of your sprites, then that counts as keeps the program from running. Okay, your, your sprites, your code, all of that needs to actually show up, but does display the elements on the screen. Okay. Position and the coordinate system. So this is using our grid. At least six shapes, sprites, or text are placed correctly on the screen using the coordinate system. At least three shapes, sprites, or text are placed on the screen using the coordinate system. So 
if you don't have six, let's say you have five, that's not six. So that's going to get you here. At least three shapes, sprites, or text are placed on the screen using the coordinate system. Let's say you have four shapes. That's going to give you a, a three for this category. Let's say you have two shapes. That's going to give you a two because you have to have a, at least one shape to get a two. Um, at least one shape, sprite, or text using the coordinate system. If you have no elements, so no shapes, no sprites, no text, placed on the screen using the coordinate system, then you will get a one for no evidence. Creating a digital artifact. Elements are used as described in the project guide and clearly display a captioned scene. Elements, that, that would be a four. This is a three. Elements are generally used as described in the project guide. Some elements are used as described in the project guide. The project guide is not filled out or is unrelated to the program. Now, I'm fine with you changing your mind after you complete the project guide, but you'll need to make changes to your project guide in order to, to get credit for the digital artifact part, okay? So let's talk about the activity guide. This is what the activity guide looks like, and I think it's going to be easier for you to complete this digitally on your iPad versus on paper, okay? So we have our grid. Using shapes, sprites, and text, you're going to create a simple scene. Simple scene, you guys. Simple, okay? You can think of this like a page in a story, a panel in a comic, or just a standalone scene. Sketch your scene. The first thing to consider when designing your scene is what your background will look like, because that's what we would be putting first, okay? You can use the drawing commands that you've used in the past to lay out a simple background over which you will place your sprites. The space below is 50 by 50, so each one of these squares is worth 50 pixels on the computer. Sketch it out. Sketch out your background using only the drawing commands referenced over here, all right? List the sprites you will use below. Now, one thing that I did allow, this is, this is for the background. If you want to go with the super simple background, yeah, use these shapes, okay? One thing that I have allowed for um, this, so under level two is level two is where you create your background. Use a background command to fill the screen with a color. All right, so what I have allowed some people to do is upload a background, a picture of a background, and let that be, upload it as a sprite and let that be your background, okay? So let's ignore, hold on. All right, so I'm going to comment out this stuff, okay, because this is not the background part. Okay, so this is the background. Oh, wait, hold on. No, I, I need the draw sprites one. Just kidding. Okay, this is my background. I did not use any of these shapes, any, any of these commands. I would have drawn it like that. And, and if I wanted to, I mean, this is a, this is a rectangle. This is a rectangle. This is a rectangle. This is the only thing that would be difficult is the plant. Okay. And getting the color of this paneling and the color of the flooring. Otherwise I could do it with, with all of these things right here. Okay. So sketch out what you want it to look like. And then if you decide you want to upload a picture, Instead of using these, then that's fine. But here's where you're gonna put your sprite labels and your descriptions. So I would have a lot of sprites. I mean, not, not a lot, because I only ended up doing a couple of things. So one sprite would be my room, my background. Another sprite is my Bitmoji. I uploaded that also, okay? Um, so that's two sprites. I was also gonna use this one but I ended up not using it, so it's not in my code. And then I have my text, that's three things, okay? 
Now, let's look back at our rubric. At least three shapes, sprites, or text are placed. So based on what I currently have in my code, I would only get a three for that. You have to have at least six shapes, sprites, or text placed correctly. And I think that using a picture for your background contributes to that because if I were to create that background using these, I would have a lot more than six. And so that's an easy an easy four in that category, okay? So if you're gonna go with a picture for your background, you have to figure out how to get more of shapes, sprites, or text on your screen to meet this requirement of at least six, okay? Keep that in mind. Create the background, add the sprites, and add the text. So for level two, this is where you create your background scene. Once you're done with that, click finish. Each level focuses on just one aspect. So level three, create your sprites. All right. Remember, whatever we call, whatever we call our variable, that's what we have to choose whenever we set our animation. So now whenever I run it, I have my background and I have my sprite bitmoji, okay? Add or create all of your sprite animations, okay? I only had two, and one of them even counted as the background, so that one doesn't even really count. You need to have at least six. Draw them all on the screen. Once you have done that, move on, because under level four is where we add the text. The final piece of the scene is to add the text. Now, I have the fill the text property, I have the text font property, I have the text size property. So I have three properties for my text, and this is what it looks like. All I said was hi. Now, if I had another character over here, maybe a student, and then more text, that would be two more, but again, that would still be five, and it's not six. And so you gotta just make sure that you're looking at the rubric to see, to see how it's gonna be graded, okay? That's level four, add text to your project. Use any other commands to change the appearance of your text. Under drawing, you have text align, text font, text size, okay? The text uh, block itself. And if you, like you have a bunch of different, what, what you might have to do is go look at your options for text fonts, okay? Because you have Times New Roman, Courier New, Georgia, Arial. I chose Courier and that's why it looks like that, okay. So once you're done adding all of your text, hit finish. On level five, check over your scene one last time to make sure you've included everything that you want. Compare the scene that you drew to your plan. Make any last minute changes. And then what are you most proud of? All right, don't forget that you'll need to submit your activity guide. And then I also want you to score yourself on this rubric. So download the rubric, okay? I want you to edit the rubric, give yourself a score based on what you have done, and you're going to upload the activity guide and the rubric to the Unit 10 assignment post, okay? So pause the video here so that you can do all of that, that mini project, and then come back so we can do our journal, our final journal for this lesson. All right, type this in your journal. What was one especially creative way you saw someone else use the blocks today? This might be hard for you to answer if you're not seeing other people use the blocks. If you want to go with something that I did, that's fine. If you want to go with something that you did, 
If you thought of a creative way to use a block today for this lesson, you can mention that, okay? Pause the video here so you can type the prompt and your response and then come back for the question of the day. All right, how can we use Game Lab to express our creativity? Type the question of the day and then type your response in the journal and that's gonna be it for lesson 10. Let me know if you have any questions. Please don't hesitate to reach out.